Hey guys, my name is Alicia, and if you didn't know, I sell secondhand clothing on the apps Depop and Poshmark, and every month I make a video talking about what I sold and how much money I made. So today we're gonna be talking about what sold in the month of February, 2022. So this month I actually ended up making 34 sales. Now this might actually be the most sales I've ever made in a single month, which is really good considering that February was a short month. It only had 28 days. So needless to say, it's been a really good month. 14 of those sales came from Depop. Seven of those sales came from Poshmark and 13 actually came from Instagram. So Depop definitely performed the best this month with Instagram coming in a close second and then Poshmark kind of coming in third. Now I'm not actually that surprised that Poshmark didn't actually end up performing that well because if you guys didn't hear, Poshmark did have a little bit of an algorithm change in the month of February. So I think that affected a lot of people's sales. I'll definitely go more in depth about this at the end of the video, but I think that's why Poshmark didn't perform that great. Now, like I mentioned in every video, I do have my own clothing pickup service, so there are quite a few of my items that I do acquire for free. So unless otherwise stated, just assume that there's no cost associated with the item. But with that being said, let's get into what sold for February. All right, guys, so the very first thing that I ended up selling this month was on Depop, and it was these Levi's dark gray denim shorts. So kind of surprising to sell shorts in the middle of winter, but it's not the first time it's happened. It's actually quite common for me, I find. And I think it's either people are going on vacation or they're just getting sick of this winter weather that they want to like start preparing for spring. These shorts were actually from my personal collection that I decided to declutter a couple months ago just because they didn't really fit me that well and I have so many shorts so it was time to get rid of them. But I ended up selling them for $30 plus $10 shipping. These technically didn't cost me anything because I did buy them so long ago that like I don't even remember how much I paid. So at the end of the day, I did end up making $16.13, which I was super happy about. I know I always say that my goal profit is at least $10, but I think I'm gonna up it. I think I'm gonna up it to about like 15 because I've noticed that's kind of like the direction that my sales have been going in recently. So even though I'll still be like happy with 10, I think we're gonna like raise the goal a little bit and try to shoot for at least 15. So next on Depop, I actually sold a bundle. It was a bundle of this Tommy Hilfiger white striped sweater and these Dickies black cargo pants. The person who actually bought these was super sweet. They ended up making like a TikTok video with these items. So that was super, super cool to see like how they styled them and stuff. I'll leave the TikTok linked below if you guys wanted to check it out. So I ended up selling that bundle for $59.98. It was free shipping because it was a bundle. So at the end of the day, I made $30.06. So when you divide that by like two items, that's basically $15. So very, very happy about that. So next on Depop, I sold another bundle, which was super exciting. I ended up selling these Adidas vintage sweats and this matching pair of she sweaters. This customer is also super sweet. They said that they've bought for me before, which is so cool. Cool. I feel like it hasn't been till very recently that I've been having these like repeat customers. So that's like been really, really cool to see that people like like my stuff so much that they come back. But I ended up selling that bundle for $79.98. Once again, free shipping because it was a bundle. So at the end of the day, I ended up making $50.68, which is amazing. Once again, that's about $16 per item. So totally, totally happy about that. Next on Depop, I ended up selling this accomplice vintage floral maxi dress. This dress was actually getting so, so popular on Depop. I think it had like 50 likes or like quite a few. So I knew it was gonna sell eventually. And one of my viewers actually ended up buying it. So that was really, really cool. They were also super sweet. So many sweet buyers this month. So I ended up selling that dress for $34.99 plus $10 shipping. I did pick this item up from thrift store by the pound. So I did pay for it, but it was extremely, extremely cheap because they were offering a promotion where you would get like a pound or two free. So I actually only paid 78 cents for this dress, which was like so, so good. So at the end of the day, I made $19.64, which was an amazing profit for a single item. Then next, I made my first Poshmark sale of the month. It was actually another bundle. So I ended up selling this Nicolas Cage face t-shirt and this Silverstein fan tee. I ended up selling both of those items for $30. And then at the end of the day, after all of Poshmark's fees and everything, I made $23.22. So that's like a little bit over $10 per item, but for t-shirts I find it's hard to make much more than that. So I'm totally happy with that. Then next on Depop, I sold another bundle, lots of bundles this month, which I love just cause it kind of like saves on shipping costs. But it was this bundle of these Guess Corduroy Flares, this Guess Vintage Dark Blue Jean, and these Roots 
fuzzy black sweatpants. So super good bundle, the corduroys ended up selling fairly quickly. The jeans, however, I've had listed for quite a while and I was getting a little bit worried, especially because like I find vintage guess is kind of hard to come by. So I was surprised that they took so long to sell, but very happy when they did. So I ended up selling that whole bundle for $85. Now I did pick up both the guess items from the thrift store. So both of those items together cost me about $16. And shipping did end up being a little bit pricey on this one. So at the end of the day, I made $35.74 which comes out to a little bit over $10 per item. So not quite hitting my new goal, but like obviously I'm still totally happy about that. Especially for a bundle, I'm always willing to make a little bit less for those. Then next I made a huge bundle on Instagram. I've been loving selling on Instagram. I feel like you get to reach like a whole new different type of customer, like people who aren't necessarily on Depop and Poshmark. And it's super nice because you don't have to pay any Depop or Poshmark fees. So I tend to make a little bit more off those sales. So very happy with those. But I ended up selling these Melanie Lynn pinstripe pants. They this Max Studio Vintage Velvet Skirt, this IQ Vintage Floral Midi Skirt, one of my handmade strawberry hair bandanas, and one of my handmade strawberry pet bandanas. So really awesome bundle. Love when my like handmade stuff sells too. It's just really cool. So I ended up selling that whole bundle for $100 plus $12 shipping. I did buy the striped pants and the floral skirt from the thrift store. So those together did end up costing me $16.24, but at the end of the day, I still made $80.81, which comes out to about $16 per item. So once again, amazing, super, super happy with that bundle. Next on Depop, I actually ended up selling this Woodland Creatures knit sweater. This one ended up getting very popular. I got quite quite a few likes on it on Depop just like the first day that I listed it and it actually ended up selling the next day. So definitely gonna keep my eye out for pieces similar to this one. And once again, one of my viewers actually ended up purchasing it, which is so, so cool, but I ended up selling it for $40 plus $10 shipping. I did actually pay $11.96 for this sweater, which is actually quite expensive, but I knew it was a really good sweater, so I was willing to pay the price. Shipping did end up being pretty pricey on this item as well. So I actually only made $9.29 on this item, which not gonna lie, I was a little bit disappointed to see, but honestly, the reason was just because the item was so expensive in the first place. So maybe next time if I pick up something similar, maybe I'll just increase the price a little bit just because there are so many people interested. Then next on Poshmark, finally made a few more Poshmark sales. I sold these Levi's 511 black skinny jeans. So even though skinny jeans aren't technically like on trend right now, they still do quite well for me on Poshmark, especially if I sell them for like a little bit cheaper. So I ended up selling these ones for $32. I believe someone sent me an offer and I accepted. So after all of Poshmark's fees and everything, at the end of the day, I made $24.77, which was totally amazing just for a single pair of jeans. I was very happy with that. Then next on Instagram, I sold another bundle. It was a bundle of this Carolyn Vintage leather patch jeans and this a6 vintage windbreaker two super cool items they actually sold on my story sale so like the same day that i listed them on instagram which was always exciting but i ended up selling both of those items for 55 dollars it was actually one of my friends who ended up purchasing these so i was able to actually just like drop it off at their house so i didn't have to pay any shipping fees or anything i did pick up both of these items from the bins the orifice market so both of those items did cost me nine dollars and 66 cents so at the end of the day i made 45 dollars and 34 cents which comes out to about over $20 per item, which is really, really amazing. Very happy about that. That's why I like selling on Instagram. Like as you can see, the profit margins are just a little bit bigger and it's just like a nice little extra treat, I guess. <laughs> then next on Poshmark, I sold this Great Lakes Country Vintage Colorful Puffer Coat. I thought this item was really cool. I picked it up in one of my thrift hauls and honestly, I thought it was gonna be more popular than it ended up being. It wasn't really getting as much attention on Depop as I thought it would. So when somebody sent me an offer for $33, on Poshmark, I accepted it because I thought that was totally fair. And with winter slowly coming to a close, I figured I should try to get rid of it now. It did cost me $9.08 when I picked it up at the thrift store. So at the end of the day, I still made $16.46, which I was happy about. 
Then next on Poshmark, I actually ended up selling these Nine West Classic Navy pumps. I've had these in my inventory for quite a while and I was really just trying to get rid of them at this point. So when somebody sent me an offer for $13, I accepted it so quickly because I just, I just don't care. I just want to get rid of them. They did have quite a bit of damage on the inside too. So I thought that price was totally fair as well. And at the end of the day, I still made $8.53. So not quite my goal, but for an item I'm really just trying to get rid of, I was totally happy about that. Then next on Poshmark, I actually sold this Brandy Millville floral dress. So once again, another item you wouldn't expect to sell in the winter. This is another item that I've had for quite a bit and was happy to finally see go to a new home. I feel like Brandy Melville items are very hit or miss sometimes. So I kind of thought, I was starting to think this one was a lost cause, but it did end up selling for $23. So at the end of the day, I actually ended up making $17.80, which is amazing. I was super happy about that one. Then next on Instagram, I sold this Victoria's Secret red course at top. This was another item that was actually pretty popular and I'm surprised it took a little bit longer to sell than I thought. I mean, it did actually sell fairly quickly, but I don't know. I, I had higher expectations for it, I guess. So this one's kind of interesting because my sister was kind of eyeing it for a while. I knew she kind of wanted it. So when somebody actually ended up selling me an offer on Depop, I let her know. I was like, hey, I have an offer right now. Like if you want this item, you're gonna have to buy it now or else this other person is gonna get it. So I actually ended up selling it to my sister for $15 just because that was probably what I was gonna end up making with the offer. This item did cost me $2.36 at the bins when I picked it up. So at the end of the day, I made $12.64, which I was happy with, especially for just like, you know, a bra kind of top. Then next, I made a bunch of sales on Instagram. I ended up selling these Nevada blue vintage overalls once again to one of my viewers. So thank you so much if you're watching. These sold super quick. They sold the same day I listed them, which I wasn't really surprised about because overalls tend to do pretty good for me. So I ended up selling them for $50 plus $12 shipping. These overalls were a steal. I only paid $5.52 for them, which was amazing. So at the end of the day, I made $41.36. So amazing, amazing profit margin for a single item. But I think I just got pretty lucky with how cheap I ended up paying for it. Plus overalls in general, like I said, just do really well. So very, very happy about that. Then next on Instagram, I actually sold another pair of overalls. So if you guys watched that thrift haul I did recently, you would have seen that I picked up both of those in the same trip and they both ended up selling like immediately after I listed them. These ones were the Nevada vintage gingham overalls, which were really cool. I ended up selling these ones for $50 plus $10 shipping. I did pay $4.73 for these ones. So at the end of the day, I still made $34.38. So a little bit less than the last pair, but still a really good profit margin. I am not complaining. Then next on Instagram, I sold another bundle. It was for these Levi's vintage orange tab blue jeans, this baby blue hand knit sweater, and this Tommy Hilfiger black tee. So the jeans and the t-shirt sold pretty quickly. I mean, the jeans sold like the same weekend as my story sale. So that was great. But I was so, so happy to finally see this baby blue hand knit sweater sell. Just because I've had it listed for quite a while, I did pick it up from the thrift store. And I personally think it's so cute. So I was just like so surprised that it took so long. So very, very happy that that one ended up selling. I ended up selling that bundle for $70 plus $12 shipping. And because I picked up the jeans and the sweater from the thrift store, those two items combined cost me about $17.14. So at the end of the day, I made $48.40 for all three items, which comes out to about $16 per item. I feel like that has kind of been the magic number this month, like 16 for some reason. So of course, very happy about that. Then next on Depop, I ended up selling these Pull and Bear black mom jeans. I really did not know how these were gonna do just cause I'd never really sold Pull and Bear before. And you know, it's more of like a fast fashion-y brand. I didn't really think it was that popular, but these sold like super, super quickly. I was really surprised. Probably cause I had them listed for a pretty good price. I actually ended up selling them for $30 plus $10 shipping. So at the end of the day, I made $20.53, which I was very happy about. Then right on the last day of the month, a bunch of sales came in, which was super exciting. So I ended up selling this bundle on Depop of this cloud patchwork bucket hat and this color block knit sweater. Once again, it was an order from one of my viewers and they were so, so sweet. So thank you so much. Like I love it when you guys 
guys like slide into my depop dms and like let me know you're a viewer even if you're not buying anything like it just makes my day so i really really appreciate it this customer was actually located in the USA, so that bundle ended up costing about $70 and then they paid about $40 in shipping. So after all of Depop's fees and PayPal and shipping costs and everything, I still ended up making $72.15, which was really, really good for two items. That actually ended up being about $36 per item, which is really good. It was nice to see that sale. And then next on Depop, I ended up selling this Pookie t-shirt. This one is really interesting because I got it in one of like my mystery thrift hauls and I thought it was so cute, but I've had it listed for so long and like no one has been really interested. It almost did not make the cut in the last time that I kind of did like an inventory clean out, but I thought, you know what, let's just give it one more chance and let's see. And it did end up selling, so very happy to finally see it go. Somebody actually sent me an offer on Depop for $15, which I accepted and they actually went through with the purchase. So so sometimes Depop offers do go through. <laughs> it's kind of hit or miss. So the customer ended up paying $15 plus $10 shipping. I don't know why, but shipping ended up being so expensive for this tiny little shirt. I thought it was gonna be cheaper just cause the customer was located in Ontario, which is like the same province as me, but for some reason shipping ended up being like $15. So at the end of the day, I actually only ended up making $6.38, which is definitely my worst <laughs> margin of the month. But like I said, this was an item that I was really just trying to get rid of. So I'm still happy to see it go even even though I only made about like $7. And then finally guys, the last sale of February was on Poshmark and it was these Gamo, Gamo Espadrille sandals. Another item that I've had listed for quite a while and I was happy to see go. So I think somebody sent me an offer for $23. I happily accepted. And so at the end of the day, I made $17.80. So very happy about that. So guys, whew, oh my God, I feel like, I feel like I've been talking forever with all these sales for this month, but as per usual, I'm gonna go ahead and add everything up and calculate how much money I made this month. All right guys, so this month I actually ended up making $632.11. So obviously super, super happy about that. It actually ended up being a little bit less than last month, which kind of makes sense because you know, there were less days this month, but I did end up making more sales this month than last month. So my average profit per item technically went down. And speaking of, my average profit per item was $18.59. So still really amazing, obviously well above my goal. So obviously very, very happy about that. And yeah, I wasn't totally sure what to expect with this month, but I'm like pleasantly surprised with how everything turned out. Now, because I've been listing so consistently, like I've been listing every single week, another metric that I did want to add was my sell through rate. So this is basically how many things you list versus how many sales you end up making. So because I actually ended up listing 30 items this month and selling 34, I've had a sell through rate of about 88%, which is actually really amazing and more than, honestly, more than I thought it was gonna be. That means I'm almost selling the same amount of items that I am listing. So super happy about that, obviously, and this is gonna be something I'll be continuing to track each month. But yeah, I will quickly go into a little bit more depth about Poshmark and their algorithm change this month. But basically in February, I can't remember if it was the beginning or what, but Poshmark basically ended up changing their algorithm a little bit so that the most recently shared items no longer appeared at the top of the search. Instead, what they did was put more general or more relevant items, I suppose, at the top when you're searching. Now, according to them, this was like a better experience for the buyer, but what I personally saw from the Poshmark community was that everybody's sales were going down. Everybody was pretty much against this algorithm change. Even I noticed, even before I realized there was an algorithm change, just how drastically this affected my sales. I mean, if you look at my Poshmark graph for this month, the whole beginning of the month, I only had one sale. And because there was such an outcry, Poshmark did end up reverting back back to their good old algorithm system just because there was such an outcry. And I swear the day after they ended up like putting things back to normal, I started making sales again, like consistently. So I just thought that was really, really interesting. So if you guys had a slower Poshmark month in February, that was probably the reason. So I thought that that was really interesting. But yeah, overall, I think that's pretty much all I had to talk about for this month. I did want to say too that I actually recently just surpassed 2000 subscribers. So I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for 
following along and like watching my videos it means so much to me so yeah i'm just super super happy with how my channel has been growing and like honestly it's just so much more fun the more people kind of join and follow along and interact so thank you guys so much and thank you to all the viewers who ended up purchasing something from my shop this month like that blew me away how many people there were like i didn't even realize till i was looking back again like how many viewers actually ended up buying something so with that being said obviously no pressure at all to buy for my shop but obviously if you do end up seeing something you like and end up purchasing it always makes my day when you guys tell me that you guys watch my videos but anyways thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you next week